Okay, Chair, we are live. Okay, thank you. I can now officially start this meeting. Uh, before I start the uh, business of the meeting, I will go to each committee member in turn uh, to confirm that they can hear and be heard. It is a legal requirement for me to do so. If you can, please have your video on and so that, so that you can be seen. And um, for those in attendance and uh, those watching, please advise me at once if at any time during the meeting you experience any technical difficulties that prevent you from uh, hearing or being heard. I remind members of the committee that you will only be able to vote on an application before the committee if you have been present for the whole of the presentation and discussion of the application. I will now call on each of the councillors' names in turn. Please speak to confirm that you are able to hear me and I will confirm in response that I can hear you. Councillor Paul Andrews. Morning Chair, I can hear and see you clearly. Councillor Polly Andrews. Good morning, I can see and hear you Chairman. Councillor Sebastian Bowen. I can see and hear you, Chairman. Councillor Clayton. Morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. I can also see and hear you. Councillor Foxton. Morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Morning, I can see and hear you. Councillor James, is he with us yet? Yes, I'm with. Yes, I'm with you. I can see okay. and hear you. I can also see and hear you. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Johnson. Morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Councillor Mike Jones. Yeah. Uh, hello, John. Yeah, I can see and hear you. Thank you. I can also see and hear you. Councillor Milmore. Good morning, Chair. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you. Thank you. Councillor Milne. Uh, morning, Chair. I can see and hear you too. You're just going to have to excuse me a minute. i have not turned my computer on. I'm going to lose you all if I don't switch the electrical. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Councillor Rome. Good morning, Chair. See you in here. I can also see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Selden. Yes, good morning, Chairman. Thank you very much. I can see and hear you. Good morning. I can see and hear you. Councillor Stone. Good morning, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Good morning. I can see and hear you. And Councillor Wilding. Morning, Chair. Yes, I can see and hear. Thank you. Good morning. I can see and hear you. Um, I'd now like to invite uh, Mr Bishop to in introduce the officers, please. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, members. Um, the items we have for consideration today are item number six, land adjacent to Garn and Birch or Cleonga. That will be presented by David Agosset. Item number seven, Hooks Cottage, Lee Bailey, Elsie Morgan. Item number eight, 41 Pool Cottages, Lower Lyde, Hereford. That will be Emily Brooks. And item number nine, 28 Mount Crescent, Hereford will be Alistair Wager. Also in attendance, Chairman, we have the legal advisor to committee today, Dawn Evans, and the governance team of Jennifer Priest and Tim Brown. Thank you, Chairman. Right, thank you, Mr. Bishop. I'd like to welcome everybody to today's meeting. The Council is uh, video and audio streaming this meeting live on the Council's YouTube channel and making an official recording. Please remember what you say and do in the meeting has a global reach and your words and actions should be chosen carefully. Please ensure that all mobile devices are switched off to prevent interference with the audio and video system. Members are reminded that speeches are limited to three minutes. Right, we go into the agenda proper now. So uh, apologies for absence. Uh, we have... Um, Apologies from Councillor Graham Andrews and Councillor Graham Jones. Uh, item two, name substitutes. Uh, we have the following substitutes. Councillor Bowen is substituting for Councillor Graham Andrews and Councillor Mike Jones for uh, Councillor Graham Jones. 
Item three, declarations of interest. Um, we have declarations of interest on uh, any application. Councillor Wilding, please. Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, yeah, so item seven is my own house, so I'll be ducking out then. Okay, thank you. Councillor Mill. Um, on item six, I'm acquainted with one of the object objectors, uh, Ms. Pollard. Okay, thank you. Mm. Right, we now move to uh, the minutes to uh, confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 10th of November 2020. No matters of accuracy have been notified to the monitoring officer. Can I ask the Democratic Services whether the electronic voting system is ready and to confirm the number of eligible voting committee members for this poll? Uh, yes, Chair, we have 15 members eligible to vote and they may cast their vote now. I'm just waiting on the last vote, Chairman. If anybody uh, wasn't at the meeting, they can abstain. Councillor Milne, you've got your hand up. I was just going to say the voting screen hadn't appeared, but it has now just appeared. So. Uh... Okay. Okay, Chair, that has been unanimously approved. Okay, thank you for that. Item 5, Chairman's Announcements. Um, I've got no announcements that I wish to make uh, this morning. Uh, there weren't any site visits yesterday, so uh, uh, I don't need to thank you for attendance of that. Um, right, Item 6, the first application on the agenda this morning. Um, it is uh, number 200. 299 land adjacent uh, Garnham, Birch Hill, Cleonga, Herefordshire. Um, can I request that um, we have the public speakers for item six attending as uh, virtual attendees, Mrs. Davis of Cleonga Parish Council and Mr. Hastings, a local resident speaking in objection are admitted to the meeting. Can you confirm when they're with us? We can't they're, they're with us, Chair. We are. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Davis and uh, Mr. Hastings. Uh, welcome to the meeting. I will call upon you to speak following the officer's presentation of the application in due course. All right. As I say, the first application, um, item six on the agenda, proposed erection of two dwelling houses with shared vehicle access at land adjacent to Garnham, Birch Hill, Cleonga, Herefordshire. We have um, Ward Councillor uh, for the area, Councillor Hitchener, who um, is not a member of this committee, but uh, he will um, open and close the debate on this item. And uh, Planning Officer dealing with this application is uh, Mr. Gossett, who will now present his uh, presentation. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gossett. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning, members. Um, the application is for full planning permission um, and was, subsequent, uh, was presented and subsequently deferred at planning committee held on the 5th of August. Uh, the deferral was made to request comments from the council's landscape officers. These comments have since been received and some amendments to the scheme and additional supporting documents have been submitted with reconsult consultations undertaken. The application is now recommended for refusal, primarily as a result of the progress the NDP has made since this application was last presented at committee. There are two reasons for refusal. The first relates to the settlement boundary and the second to the identified landscape harm. The application is for two dwellings, one a detached bungalow, the other a detached two-storey dwelling with separate garage. In the first instance, the proposal falls to be considered against the Herefordshire local plan core strategy, which forms the development plan, 
Additionally relevant and material is the National Planning Policy Framework and the emerging draft Klihonga Neighbourhood Development Plan, or CNDP. This doc document has passed through independent examination since the application was last considered, and the document as a whole can now be attributed significant weight as set out in paragraph 48 of the MPPF. On your slide, the application site is marked by the usual red star. Next slide, please. The application site is marked here by the red edge. The aerial photograph below shows the context of Klihonga to the north and the surrounding field pattern. Klihonga is a identified in the core strategy as being a settlement which will be the main focus of proportional housing growth. Currently, the published provision of housing and planning approvals totals 197, an exceedance of 88 houses over and above the minimum growth target for the plan period of 2011 to 2031. In addition to this, the emerging NDP sets out a windfall allowance of a further 15 dwellings in, this, in the settlement boundary. Next slide, please. This plan shows the site's relationship with the applicant's home Garnham, marked by the blue edge. The application site lies between Garnham and the private access for Birch Hill House on the unregistered 73412 named Poplar Road. The site is outside but abutting the defined settlement boundary contained within the emerging CNDP in which Garnham is the last property recognised as forming part of the settlement. Currently under core strategy RA2 the proposal is considered adjacent to the main built form of the settlement. While the surrounding environment includes a number of cottages indicated on historic mapping, which dates back as far as 1843, there are no listed heritage assets in the vicinity. Next slide, please. Members will see here the proposed site plan, which has changed since this was last presented. To the left is the proposed two-storey detached dwelling and detached garage, and to the right is the proposed bungalow. These have switched locations with each other since it was last presented. A single shared access is proposed onto Poplar Road. Uh, a section of hedgerow will need to be removed to facilitate the access, with two further sections either side of this relocated behind the required visibility displays. This will widen Poplar Road for the length of the visibility displays, which is about 50 metres in length. The visibility displays have been calculated following a seven-day speed survey. A range of landscaping is proposed on the site. And the proposal is to utilise soakways to manage excess surface water runoff. The application was supported by soakway testing. Furthermore, in regards to foul drainage, this would be managed by individual package treatment plants with final outfall to on-site drainage field. No concern was raised by the council, council's drainage consultant on this matter and is considered policy compliant. Next slide, please. Briefly, here are two photos from Poplar Road taken either side of the proposed access, with a map showing the location and direction of the photos corresponding with the colour. The photo highlighted red on the left shows the view southeast with the proposed access on the left hand side. The blue photo shows the view northwest with the proposed access beyond the hazard sign on the right hand side of that hedge. Next slide, please. Here are some photos from within the application site with a map again indicating the location organized by color. Firstly, the red photo was taken from near the shared boundary with Garnham. Looking up the application site, it is possible to see the mature hedgerow surrounding the field. The green photo in the bottom left uh, is towards the southern corner of the site and shows the location of the existing access, which has recently been blocked with a fence and new planting. The blue photo is the wider view north from the application site across Klihonga towards hills on the other side of the River Wye. This is a particularly noteworthy view as it is specifically referenced in the emerging CNDP via policy C4, which seeks to protect certain public views, this one being referenced under point three as view B. Next slide, please. Here I have a short video for members just to get acquainted with the site. So firstly, looking northwest towards Garnham and the line of silver birch trees, turning north with views over Klihonga and the wider landscape, following this boundary hedge up and round, coming now to the southeast boundary hedge and towards that southern corner of the site with the new fence. Finally, moving down the southwestern site boundary and mature hedge where the access is proposed through this hedge to Poplar Road on the other side. And next slide, please. 
Here members will see the floor plans and elevations of the proposed three bedroom bungalow with a gross floor area of approximately 145 square meters. The design of the proposed bungalow is simple in form. The result is an unobtrusive dwelling that retains some similarities to the surrounding built form by way of its proposed scale, massing, positioning on site and materials, namely the proposed facing brickwork and timber clad exterior. Next slide, please. Here are the floor plans and elevations of the proposed detached two-story dwelling with a gross floor area of 222 square meters plus a detached garage. This provides four bedrooms and has a more detailed design incorporating additional architectural features such as dormer windows, a part glazed gable end, and a glass balustrade to a roof terrace. Next slide, please. Uh, here is the elevations of the proposed garage. Uh, which would accommodate two cars. Next slide, please. This slide shows two sectional elevation plans of the proposal. Firstly, from within the application site, and secondly, set behind the hedgerow with the Poplar Road. This demonstrates the height of the dwellings, taking into account the site's topography and the existing boundary hedge. Next slide, please. Briefly, this slide shows the visibility space, achieving the 85th percentile speed recorded taken from the speed survey conducted in support of the application. These have been reviewed by the local highways authority engineers who confirm their acceptability for the scale of development. Next slide, please. The applicant has commissioned these visuals at the request of the senior landscape officer following deferral in August. The senior landscape officer raised concern in their initial comments following deferral that the proposal would degrade the intimate rural character of Poplar Road in this transitionary location. The senior landscape officer has since reviewed these visuals and stated that they confirm his initial concerns and therefore he objects to the proposed development. This has formed part of the basis of the second recommended reason for refusal set out in their officer's report. Next slide, please. On this slide, members will see the landscaping plan for the application site. Uh, as I run through my summary, um, so firstly, in landscape terms, given the public view from Birch Hill, will be disrupted by the erection of the dwellings despite the revised site layout and mitigating factors of scale and landscaping. There is an identified conflict with core strategy, uh, sorry, with policy C4 of the emerging CNDP, which is attributed significant weight. Specifically, this policy seeks to protect views in the interest of public community. Furthermore, the loss of hedgerow and widening of Poplar Road along the visibility space is considered to have an adverse impact upon the character of the area. This has led to the senior landscape officer objecting to the proposed development and together with the disruption of the protective view forms the basis for the second reason for refusal. In regards to design, there is no uniform character to the dwellings local to the application site, but a large proportion utilize facing brickwork as a result, the development plan and the emerging CNDP seeks to control aspects of the, of the design only by reinforcing local character and not through a prescriptive design guide. As such, there is some flexibility to the acceptable style and materials. Overall, the proposed designs are considered to broadly align with the requir requirements of core strategy SD1 and CNDP policy C6. In regards to highways, the proposed access, parking and turning arrangements are supported by a seven day speed survey and have been reviewed by the local highways authority. While some local objection to the proposal focused on the narrow nature of Poplar Road, the MPPF at paragraph 109 states that development should only be prevented or refused on transport grounds where the residual cumulative impacts of the development are severe. Given that the visibility displays meet local and national requirements and the small scale of the development, this is not considered to have severe impacts. In regards to sustainable transport, there are local and long distance public transport connections in Klihonga and bicycle storage could feasibly, feasibly be provided within the application site. The application is supported by a phase one ecological survey, which includes recommendations for appropriate mitigation and biodiversity net gain enhancements and an arboriculture impact assessment. These have been reviewed by the council's relevant technical consultees and the proposal is considered to adhere to core strategy LD2, LD3, as well as the relevant sections of CNDP policy C4. Furthermore, the council's ecologist has completed the required appropriate assessment under the HRA process. This concluded there would be no likely significant effects upon the integrity of the River Wye special area of conservation this has subsequently been reviewed by Natural England, 
who raised no objection. In summary, the application must be viewed in light of the fact that Council is currently unable to demonstrate the required five-year housing land supply. As such, the MPPF directs decision makers to grant planning permission unless the adverse impacts of doing so would significantly and demonstrably outweigh the benefits when assessed against the framework as a whole. The location of the application site is beyond the identified settlement boundary of the emerging CNDP and as such represents development contrary to the emerging spatial strategy. While core strategy currently forms the principal policy of the development plan for assessment of these matters, the CNDP is material and should be given significant weight in the decision. It is relevant to note that the independent examiner of the NDP chose to maintain the site's exclusion from the settlement boundary, despite representations requesting its inclusion. Given the quantum of development already focused within Klihonga and provided for in the emerging plan, it is considered that this conflict with the spatial strategy would result in unjustified adverse impacts. Furthermore, the application proposes two dwellings in a location that would disrupt a view that CNDP has sought to protect, in the interest of public amenity via policy C4. And finally, the senior landscape officer has identified further adverse impacts as a result of the access arrangements, arrangements which would be con contrary to policy C core strategy LD1 and CNDP L uh, C6. Overall, it is officer's view that the proposal when assessed against the current policy and emerging policy provisions does not demonstrate a sustainable pattern of development. The adverse impacts identified are considered to significantly and demonstrably outweigh the modest benefits associated with a scheme of this size. Therefore, it is officer's recommendation that planning permission be refused for the reasons set out in the report. Thank you, Chairman. That brings me to an end. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gossett. Um, I now turn to uh, public speakers this morning. Um, in addition to uh, Mrs. Davis and Mr. Hastings, we also have a a written statement from um, Mr. Bond, the um, applicant's agent. So I'd now like to invite Mrs. Davis to speak on behalf of uh, Cleonga Parish Council. Um, in your own time, you have three minutes, please. And at, at the three minute stage, if you haven't finished, I will be um, reminding you and um, probably uh, ask you to stop speaking. So in your own time, please. Thank you. Well, good morning, councillors. Um, I spoke at the last planning committee meeting when this application was discussed and would like to make the following observations. And as Mr. Gossett has told you, the NDP has now passed its examination stage. Um, the NDP excluded this site from the settlement boundary as it was felt the view at this point was very important to the village. Indeed, a picture of this site um, was actually on the front cover of the NDP document that we sent to the whole community. Um, the new plans don't remove the objection of the, of the loss of the amenity view. I'm told you can see five counties from this skyline. And conversely, the impact on the skyline from the village and from further afield will be quite, quite significant. Birch Hill is very narrow at this point, and there is a nearly 90 degree bend further, slightly further up the hill with very limited visibility. Um, the lane is frequently used by families of walkers with young children, especially during the current crisis. This is where we have a lot of issues, but we also have a lot of vans used, a lot of um, commercial traffic uses it. Um, that doesn't sort of seem to be shown from the, the figures that you have. Um, under the Herefordshire core plan, we were expected to provide about a hundred new homes by 2031. Planning permission has already been given for over 200 new dwellings which has resulted in significant disruption for residents over the last few years, and particularly a significant loss of amenity land um, that gave opportunity for residents to exercise and meet up. We've lost a lot of that. We don't have nearly so much now. And Birch Hill is a really important access route for both walkers and cyclists to access open countryside and footpaths. And for this reason, I would ask that you reject the application and thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. Davis. Thank you. Um, I'd now like to uh, ask Mr. Hastings, who is uh, speaking in objection, um, to uh, actually start in your own time, please. Three minutes again. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much for the invitation. Okay, um, I think Mrs. Davis has said most of uh, the point covered most of my points as well. Um, I would only add that um, my background is um, 
I guess the property that we live in is right next door to the Garnums. Um, all the neighbours get on, so I don't see any problem, no personal problems. My main concern is the ecology, really. Um, I'm the one who sort of sent the aerial photos showing where the um, badges set is. Apologies for that. That was uh, indiscreet. And uh, I, I'm the one who says, yeah, we've definitely got five five counties we can see from the top of the hill, but you have to jump up quite high at the moment. There's a very high hedging. Um, in addition to the bats, we had some badges and, and I was furloughed for six months. And I, when you've got six months, you spend some time in the garden. I lifted a couple of rocks. I found some very large frogs. I was surprised. I think one was a toad. Found some small, small frogs as well. <coughs> then at, at the top of the garden, we had some, a pile of rocks and, and a, a lizard popped out. And I thought, Hang on, very tiny, tiny little lizard. Fantastic. So I've had a great six months furlough, but now I work in the uh, in manufacturing, UK manufacturing. Um, construction is is one of uh, my customers, so I'm certainly all for sustainable construction. What worries me though is is what will happen to the ecology in the hedges along Birch Hill. Um, it it is fine. It's a fine set of wildlife. Um, the owl woke me up last night. It's fantastic. Last week, I counted 12 magpies. They're a bit of a pain in the ass, but um, they do make the country feel like the country. I'm, I'm just worried what will happen if we, we start ripping up hedgerows to, to build a couple of small houses. So I'm, I have read the officer's report, and I really appreciate the refusal, and I support the refusal full-heartedly. So that's it from me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hastings. Um, I'd now like to um, ask Mr. Brown to uh, read the written submission from Mr. Vaughan, the uh, applicant's agent, please. These application proposals are acknowledged by the case officer to represent appropriate, sustainable development in all of its facets on land adjoining the settlement boundary <coughs> defined within the draft Clihonga Neighbourhood Development <coughs> Plan, CCNDP. The proposed development is considered by the officer to represent a natural extension of the settlement, paragraph 6.10. Proposals accord entirely with core strategy policy RA2, albeit conflict has been identified with CCNDP policy C2, which has now passed through independent examination without modification. Additionally, and notwithstanding the unquestionable con contradiction with the officer's previous report to the August Planning Committee, the proposals are now considered to adversely affect the landscape character by virtue of removal of a very short section of roadside hedgerow to facilitate the proposed vehicle access and its associated highways visibility displays, which will result in marginal increase in the width of the highway. Since the August Planning Committee, when this application was deferred pending a formal landscape consultation, the scheme has subsequently been adjusted to further minimise the visual impact of development, placing the single storey dwelling on the more elevated southeastern section of the site. The revised site layout is acknowledged to be more sympathetic to the local landscape and topography of the site, resulting in reduced intrusion into the landscape and is acknowledged by the Council's senior landscape officer to represent a positive change in terms of landscape impact. Great significance is placed on protection of an existing far-reaching view looking northwards from Birch Hill, which by virtue of the existing site perimeter hedge can currently only be readily glimpsed through a metal farm gate at the junction with an unclassified track. The case officer states correctly that a temporary fence erected at this gate position does not constitute permitted development under the GPDO and as such does not represent a credible fallback position in respect of protection afforded to the view cited in CCNDP policy 4. However, he omits to highlight that the planting of fast-growing conifers, for example, in this location falls entirely outside development control and if planted would equally block the protected view. Additionally, should the existing perimeter hedge be allowed to increase in height, opportunities to experience that view would equally be further diminished. Whilst the current housing supply delivery position of Glihonga within its wider HMA is highlighted as, as being in excess of minimum requirements as defined within the MPPF, the overall housing land delivery position of Herefordshire Council as a whole continues to deteriorate. The most recent five-year housing land supply position of 3.69 years reported in September 20 represents proof of this chronic underperformance by any objective measure. These application proposals are acknowledged by the case officer to represent wholly appropriate sustainable development in an edge of rural settlement site location. 
in the context of an undeniable countywide deficit in five-year housing land supply provision, together with a demonstrably achievable material fallback position, which falls outside the scope of development control, which would further reduce the very view CCNDP policy C4 seeks to maintain, members are urged to take a pragmatic view and approve this planning application. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Um, we struggled to keep within the three minutes there by about uh, 10 seconds. But um, there we go. Um, right, I'd like to um, thank our uh, virtual attendees uh, for attending this morning and um, ask that they're put back in the waiting room and just remind them that uh, they don't need to sit in there. Um, they can obviously uh, leave the waiting room and um, watch the um, live stream on, on the Council's YouTube channel. So um, thank you both very much. Good morning to you both. Right, I now move across to um, Ward Councillor, Councillor Hitchener, who um, has got the opportunity to open the debate. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hitchener. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Chairman, and thank you, uh, Councillors. Um, I'll be fairly brief. Uh, by way of background, this is this is obviously Klihonga. Um, it uh, it has about six hundred dwellings. Um, the uh, uh, core strategy suggested an, about an, another hundred should be built, um, and so far uh, the settlement has about uh, planning permission for about two hundred. So, uh, in percentage terms, um, under the uh, uh, quite shortly, this this. Um, village will have increased in size by over 30 percent in terms of population and dwelling numbers and I think that is that is a, an enormous increase and I do think this village should be given the opportunity to kind of settle down with uh, the this increased number I think uh, to ask it to keep keep on adding more and more properties on top is is, is not uh, is not appropriate for this particular uh, village um, the, uh, the NDP uh, is now at a more advanced stage than it was before, and um, obviously the people who are involved in, in writing that, the amount of time they committed to it, they, they would expect some acknowledgement of, of the fact that they have worked so hard on it, um, and probably the final acceptance of it, or at least the vote, uh, wouldn't, would have taken place by now had it not been for COVID. Um, so, so those, those, if I can say, just went by way of background, then I think the, the, the detail um, uh, the NDP uh, has to have significant weight, um, so so that's an important factor, I think, for this committee. The second thing about landscaping, I do note the the uh, statements from uh, the applicant, but the um, planning, uh, the landscape officer in uh, paragraph four seven um, does say that he's satisfied the applicant has responded to comments, but he's still of the opinion that the impact on the lane is harmful to the landscape character and biodiversity. So he continues to be. Uh, objecting to this this um, uh, development, um, there are uh, lo local objections. Uh, Twenty six of those from thirteen households, but also uh, nine supporters. So, so it is a a development of of considerable interest, both for and and against. Um, and and lastly, the, the traffic issue. The lane is is quite clearly a, a very small country lane, and if you do drive up up there. Uh, it's some way before you come to a passing space, so vehicles have to back uh, forward and backwards. Um, I noticed the speed going past the site uh, recorded was was it 28 miles an hour. That's a clear indication that this is a narrow road. People have to be very careful as they're driving up and down. And I just don't think this is appropriate to put two, two houses uh, behind, behind the hedge. When the application came first, I, I, I was... Um, I thought it was quite finely balanced as to which way uh, the decision should, should go. Uh, but at that, at that time, the officer um, was minded to accept the application. Uh, I think it's reflective of the, of the fine balance when it came first time that uh, information has now come available, um, the NDP improving his status um, uh, has, has actually shifted the balance uh, towards uh, a refusal, which is what the, um, the officer is recommending. Uh, thank you very much. I will await your discussions and then sum up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Hitchener. Um, I'll just remind the uh, the meeting that uh, 
Councillor Hitchener doesn't get a vote on this application. He's just here as the ward uh, member for the uh, for the application. Uh, right, we go into the uh, debate proper now, and I'm looking for the uh, first speaker, please. Uh, Councillor Foxton. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Mr. Gossett, for a clear presentation. Um, it's obvious that if a hedge blocks visibility for access to and from a site, then it has to be removed. The landscape plan has a range of native species of varying sizes to mitigate the loss of hedgerow. I was pleased to see the recommendation of planning with the right tree in the right place and the senior planning officers <coughs> A cluster of pear and apple trees as being appropriate and preferential for the area. Now, um, in this application, there's proposed to be a significant loss of established hedgerows, which is dreadful shame, uh, and it inevitably impacts on the wildlife corridor of the country lane. Um, the site layout has been revised with a bungalow on the higher site and the two-storey house on the lower ground to mitigate the impact. So they'd taken in um, recommendations, which is um, certainly a good thing. Now, the number of householders objecting outnumber those supporting but the number of households supporting are still quite significantly high in comparison, which makes it a very tricky um, decision. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Foxton. Uh, Councillor Roan. Thank you, Chair. I don't know about the rest of my colleagues, but I do a lot of doodling when I'm listening to presentations and, and highlighting keywords. Some of the highlighted keywords I've got down here. Bungalow, big tick by it. Clihonga, fantastic bus service. Great. It's got shops. It's got a pub. It's got schools. All got big ticks by them. I looked at, I know the area very well. I looked at the, uh, the, the site plan that we've been given. And uh, to me, it does look like a natural extension. It looks like infill. You've got the roads bordering it. So why wouldn't you go to the edge of that? However, uh, Kionga's NDP um, C2 deals with this. Enough is enough. That's where we're putting the line in the sand. So I appreciate that. Kionga's a very, very popular village. Uh, and I do believe that everything that's built there sells. So it does show that there's a capacity for more. Is it too much too soon? 200 houses instead of 100 in the first few years? Uh, I think between now and 2031, we've got to, had to have built 100 houses. I don't know if you're aware, there's still quite a few years left between now and 2031. Uh, if the, uh, on the negative side though, if the, um, site isn't within the village, it is therefore outside the village, and so therefore it's a greenfield site. But for me, we, I mean, we can't keep saying no to, to developments, but the, the officer report is really, really good. For me, what makes my mind up and makes me say that I will be going with the officer report is the fact that at what point are we going to stop vandalism of ripping out 45 metres of hedgerow. I think that is completely and utterly unacceptable. And by saying no to developments, even little ones like this, because of that, it will send big, big noise to all those who are considering putting forward something similar. I remember going just recently, we went to a site visit. I think it was in Council Stringlehurst Ward. And the, the description was only 25 metres of hedgerow is going to be removed. We keep adding up all these 25s and 45s and 15s, which, it, which it's, it's vandalism. So for me, that pushes the balance and I will be supporting the officer recommendation today. Thank you, Chair. Uh, 
thank you, Councillor Roan. Is that a recommending recommendation for a uh, refusal? I don't see why not. Have we a seconder, please? Councillor Selden. Okay, thank you. We now move to uh, Councillor Stone, please. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was, I think I'm muted now. Yeah, um, you are. We can hear you. Thank you. I agree very much with the officer's recommendation here and with the comments that uh, Councillor Roan has just made. I think it's very important, Chairman, to support our uh, neighbourhood development plans. I know from my own experience in my own area how much work goes into these. And this is obviously the case in Klihonga as well. And I note that there's now um, the local N NDP has significant weight. So I do think we should pay attention to the recommendations in the NDP and the policies in the local NDP. And secondly, Chairman, as has been pointed out, there's been a 30% increase in housing in Klihonga. It's obviously a very popular village to live in and there's a lot, got a lot of good facilities, but sometimes it's time just to call a halt or to call um, a temporary halt to development just to allow the present um, de developments to settle in. Um, so I think the increase in housing has been very significant indeed. And these extra houses may not have a huge impact, but they'll have some impact. And they are um, outside the settlement boundary as has just been um, explained in the officer's report. And finally, Chairman, um, there's been mention made of the views. You could possibly see five counties plus all the, um, the wildlife that was mentioned earlier. And I think views are important. And it's all very well saying we're not meeting the land supply and we need more housing. But I think the environment is important too and people's views and the um, comfort that it brings everybody in our beautiful county of Herefordshire. So I shall be voting um, in favor of the officer's recommendation, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Stone. Uh, Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> the, uh, in the last number of years, sitting on this committee, I've noticed <clears throat> that there have been numerous occasions where applications have been made outside of the settlement boundary, but immediately adjacent to it, <clears throat> and uh, that have been successful Buildings have been put up. That doesn't mean that the settlement boundary has been extended. It means that there is a, now a property adjacent to it. So it doesn't lead naturally to a continued uh, stream of people wanting to add to that line because the next person who wanted to build along could not say that they are immediately adjacent to the settlement boundary. Secondly, with regard to sustainability, which is one of the two reasons which the officer gives for recommending refusal. Um, I find it difficult to understand why these two properties would not be sustainable. Um, the hedge there, um, undoubtedly, it's a shame to remove some hedges, <clears throat> but we've got thousands and thousands of miles of hedges. There's far more hedging lost to modern agriculture than there ever is to building. And if we were sent out just to preserve hedges, we would do something about agriculture, I feel. So on balance, I, and I completely understand the reasons given by the ward councillor, Mr. Hitchener, uh, but on balance, I can see no sound reason for objecting to this. Um, and I note that there are nine people who've written in to support this application, and uh, I will vote against the recommendation to refuse. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Selden. Thank you, Chair. I, I, I second the uh, proposal made forward by Councillor Roan. Um, in the planning balance, it's always difficult to see where the tipping point is. And for me, the tipping point has been the um, adoption of the Neighbourhood Development Plan. And I think it's essential that we take notice of neighbourhood development plans because the people who draw them up 
are the ones that can foresee the damage and potential uh, loss of amenity that a development like this can cause. So in, in the planning balance, I shall be voting um, with uh, Council of Rome. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Selden. Uh, Councillor James, please. Thank you, Chairman. I, I congratulate the officer on a full and exhaustive report, which is very thorough. And like others, I think it lies very much in the balance on this particular issue. But I ten I'm tending now to, to support the officer's recommendation for a refusal. Uh, you know, we have given, as Councillor Johnson previously said, planning permissions to to um, developments outside the on the, outside the settlement boundary on the on the actual boundary itself, but there has to be a time when there are other other considerations where that has to be refused. I mean, if we if we if we have a policy of always um, giving planning permission uh, on properties uh, uh, surrounding or adjoining the settlement boundary, then we. we well, Cleohonga itself will have about another 500 houses. So there are other issues other than that. I think, you know, I, I on balance, will support the officer's recommendation. Um, I think it, I'm a bit nervous about how it will be dealt with on appeal, but I do think the stronger issue is, is the environmental and, and uh, uh, view, uh, the effect on the, on the environment. Um, the, the and the fact that the, the local development plan has been published, which um, rules that out. So, on balance, I shall support the officer's recommendation. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you, Councillor James. I believe Mr. Bishop uh, would like to have a word before I call upon uh, Councillor Polly Andrews. Alan said the NDP was adopted. It's not adopted yet. It's been through the examiner's uh, report um, and it's got significant weight. So the plan is not adopted yet. And uh, secondly, can I just identify that the hedgerow to be removed is 4.5 metres. The remaining hedgerow either side is being translocated back. So there's only 4.5 metres lost. And, that, and that's in the, the recommendation two of your, uh, of your, of your papers. So it's only 4.5 metres of the hedgerow, which is lost. I, I just wanted to correct those two points, Chairman. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr Bishop. That's uh, useful uh, information that members need to uh, consider. Uh, Councillor Polly Andrews, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I, well, much of what I was going to say has been said by Councillor Stone, but I would simply say that the good people of Cleehogger have worked hard on their development plan and we should support their their views. Um, they clearly are not against development in the number of ha new houses that have been been built and are going to be built. And so I feel that uh, this is perhaps the, the final straw for them. It's outside the settlement boundary and I will support the officer's recommendation for refusal. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Andrews. Uh, Councillor Bowen. <clears throat> uh, I think you thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I think almost everything has been said. Uh, translocation of hedges is a somewhat, uh, shall we say, tricky thing for the hedge itself. They don't always survive this by a long way, and it's a massive disruption in the wildlife corridor as well. So just just to bring that to your point, but I, I think we've had a very thorough debate, and I propose that we um, go to the vote, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Right, thank you, Councillor Bowen. Um, I've just got one more speaker uh, registered who I will take, and then uh, I will um, probably go back to uh, officers and, and ward councillor before we go to the vote. Thank you. So, councillor Wildy. Uh, thanks, Chair. So um, I just wanted to use this opportunity to just mention sustainability. Uh, <coughs> has talked about it being sustainable. Uh, the office has talked about it not being sustainable. We've had sustainable building, we've had sustainable this, we've had sustainable that. In my view, sustainable is being used T 
totally wrongly all the time by the council, by the planning department, by businesses. So we need to get understand what sustainability is. And I think the only way to use the word sustainable in future would be if you qualified what you mean by it, i.e. it's sustainable for five years. It's sustainable because a brick wall lasts a long time. Uh, where's the sustainability in terms of natural capital if you uh, build on a field? There is no sustainability. So sustainability is a massive problem, I think, when we're talking about applications. If we're saying this application is sustainable, where's its southern orientation uh, of the roofs? Where is its uh, commitment to provide um, electricity generation? Where is its sustainability with uh, providing electric EV points, uh, stuff like that? So uh, they, they say the word sustainable all over the place, but no one actually means it. All they mean is uh, that it's sustainable for their own personal bank accounts. So um, that's my my thoughts on sustainability. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, go to Mr. Bishop, please, um, to make any comments before I go back to the ward councillor. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, a good round of debate uh, uh, yet again on <clears throat> on this uh, on, on this particular item. The members have picked up the the key points. The fact that the neighbourhood development plan has moved move forward with the examiner's report being received. Um, which clearly identifies that this site is outside, outside but adjacent to the settlement boundary. If we if we didn't have the quantum of development uh, at Cleonga that we we have had, then uh, uh, it could be the case that officers will be recommending approval of the application purely and simply because of the need for additional dwellings. But where where the exceedance in this particular instance has been, has been quite excessive, uh, over 100, I believe it is, no, or no, no, nearly 100, I think it's quite right that the officers have come down with the recommendations they have, together with the landscape harm. Sustainability is as identified within your end, um, within the na National Planning Policy Framework, and that's where officers take that steer from. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Um, I turn to uh, Councillor Hitchener to... Um, make any final comments before we go to the vote. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's, it's fairly clear which way this vote is going to go. Um, I wouldn't uh, propose to try to dissuade you from, from that uh, opinion. Um, I do have a little bit of a concern about the view because um, the view is actually being blocked by, by a, a, a fence being put up. And, and I just would appeal to the applicant uh, to um, think in terms of the benefit for the community of that, that view, uh, whether he might consider taking down that fence. Uh, and I had to say, I was a little bit disappointed by the comment from his agents that um, they could perhaps put up, uh, grow a load of conifers there and we couldn't object to that. So that would kind of, uh, uh, that's another way of blocking the view instead of a, a fence that is rather ugly. So I would, um, can't force him to do this, but the request that he takes that fence down and puts um, uh, puts the gate back so that the community can enjoy the views which they've been enjoying for many years. Thank you. I have nothing to add. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Hitchner. Um, right, we now go to the vote. Can I remind members of the committee that they can only vote on this application if you have been present for the whole of the presentation of and discussion on the application? Is um, there any member that needs to advise me that they're not permitted to vote? Councillor Milmore. Yes, uh, Chairman. I, my, for some reason, I lost connection for about 30 seconds uh, during Councillor Wilding's um, comments, which I, I'm not sure if they were actually relevant. Other than that, I've been present for the whole of the vote. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look to... Uh, Mrs. Evans, then, um, if she considers that uh, to to um, affect whether uh, Councillor Millmore can vote or not. Thank you, Chair. Um, as long as Councillor Millmore heard the majority of the debate, he heard the the speakers, he heard the uh, case officers' report on it, um, and as I say, he may have missed thirty seconds of Councillor Welding. But as long as he's got the gist of what was actually being said and he's heard the other members, I don't see any reason why he shouldn't be able to vote on the application, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, 
of confirmation and there's 15 members I believe that are present to uh, able to vote. Uh, can I ask Jen if that's uh, her understanding? Yes, that's correct, Chair, and okay. I will launch the poll now. Right. Uh, members have 30 seconds in which to uh, vote for refusal of this application as recommended by the officer, against or abstain. Um, so if you could please vote now. Okay, Chair, all votes are in. Uh, 14 members uh, for those recommendations, one against. Okay, thank you. So um, that is carried then that this application be refused as per officer recommendation. Um, I'm now going to call for a 10 minute adjournment. Uh, can I have confirmation, please, that the live stream has been paused, please? Right, thank you. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody back to the meeting following our adjournment. Um, could I ask, uh, before we start this uh, next application that Councillor Wilding is um, actually moved into the waiting room as he, it is his application, he's a member of this committee and uh, is not allowed to be involved. I think he's, uh, yes, he's in the waiting room. Right, uh, second application this morning then, item seven on the agenda, uh, 202, she's made a written submission and um, uh, that will be read out uh, following the uh, officer's report. Um, we have um, Miss Elsie Morgan, who is uh, presenting the um, report to us this morning. Um, and in your own time, please. Thank you, Chair, and good morning, everyone. As we've mentioned, the case here before members is presented at this committee as the applicant is a ward member, and this would usually be dealt with as a delegated matter. The scheme is assessed under the adopted Herefordshire Local Plan course <coughs> strategy and the Western Under Penyard Neighbourhood Development Plan made in May 2016. This can be afforded significant weight for the purposes of decision making in relation to this householder application. Hooks Cottage is sited within a residential cluster at Lee Bailey, characterised by a varied local vernacular on the north side of the C1278, as indicated by the red star. Next slide, please. The application relates to a two-storey stone and rendered cottage with an adjoining barn converted into an annex, the site marked by the red line. The property is set back from and below the road as indicated in the bottom right image. Next slide, please. Planning permission is sought for the construction of a single-storey lean-to extension to the southwest elevation, a balcony to the northwest elevation, and the replacement of a window with an entrance door and porch to the southeast elevation. Next slide, please. As evident in the elevation plan showing the proposed additions in blue, the scheme would not result in built development of an unacceptable scale and would not constitute overdevelopment. The proposed extension to the southwest elevation would be a single storey structure maintaining subservience to the host dwelling. Given the topography of the site and the maximum height of four metres, the visual impact is minimal and would not detract from the wider setting. The proposed balcony and porch are of an acceptable scale that would not negatively affect the appearance of the host dwelling. The balcony to the rear would not be visible from most vantage points, whilst the porch and entrance is of a suitable modest scale. Next slide, please. With regards to overlooking, the extension would introduce a number of glazed openings. However, due to its single storey nature and the positioning of fenestration to the existing building, the scheme would not increase impact upon residential amenity. The proposed balcony would not impact amenity as the northwest of the site is characterised by open countryside, as indicated in the image. 
Next slide, please. The development has been designed to reflect the character of the host dwelling, utilising materials to match that of the existing dwelling in stone and render, and this is secured by condition to ensure the suitable material use. The lean-to extension ensures uh, it reads as a later addition, maintaining the character of the existing entrance porch as shown in the top image. The proposed porch and balcony would appear in keeping with the host dwelling and utilise modest design so not to detract from the cottage, cottage character. As noted within the committee report at paragraph 6.6, .6, there are no ecological concerns relating to the scheme and the householder application does not trigger a habitats regulation assessment. The nearby ancient woodland is 70 metres to the east of the site and is therefore not impacted by the proposal. To conclude, no conflict is found with local and national policies, namely SD1, LD1 and SS6 of the core strategy and D1 of the NDP with regards to scale, amenity and design approach. As such, the scheme is recommended for appro approval subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms Morgan. Um, there's no public speakers registered for this application. Um, as I've already mentioned, uh, the applicant who is the ward councillor um, obviously ca cannot be involved. And Councillor Watson has um, actually acted as proxy for um, ward councillor position. Uh, she was unable to attend the meeting this morning, um, but she's um, uh, given a, a written submission, which uh, Mr. Brown will read to us now. Thank you. Good morning. I would like to thank the case officer for outlining the development of this application, which comprises a single storey lean to extension to the southwest side of the property, an open porch on the southeast side, a second floor balcony on the northwest side. These alterations utilise materials to match that of the existing dwelling, stone and render and slate roof. Do not detract from the character of the cottage, do not negatively impact on local biodiversity or the residential amenity of surrounding properties. They include measures to reduce their carbon footprint by maximising solar gain and using high quality insulation. No objections have been received from the parish council, neighbours or the local community. Therefore, as proxy councillor for this application, I support the case officer's recommendation for, recommendation for approval and ask members of the committee to do the same. And that concludes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, we now go into the debate proper and uh, first registered to speak is uh, Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. I, I'm bearing in mind the, the officer's report um, I don't think we need to debate this much. Um, this is merely a formality that it has to come to this committee. It would have normally been dealt with by delegated powers and would have been given virtual automatic um, um, approval. So I move that to the move the officer's recommendation. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor James. Um, look for a seconder, please. Yes, I'll second that. <clears throat> Johnson. Thank you. Uh, next registered to speak is Councillor Mill. Yes, thank you, Chair. I, I was sim simply going to say that um, I, I very much appreciate uh, Councillor Wilding so eagerly embracing, as you would expect him to do in, his, in, in this application, the new um, the checklist tool for, for um, uh, climate emergency and indeed the, the biodiversity one. Uh, so um, and 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 clearly he's he's given that a great deal of consideration as you would expect him to do, uh, which which uh, weighs heavily in in favour with me. So I shall be voting for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, are we any other members that uh, wish to uh, speak on this application? If not, um, oh, Councillor Milmore, please. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Unfortunately, I missed most of the um, officer's report on this. I'm having a bit of uh, trouble today with connecting, so I don't think I'll be able to vote on this one. OK, uh, thank you for letting us know. Uh, if we've no further speakers, um, I'll go across to uh, Mr Bishop for any comments before we go to the vote, please. No comments, Chairman. Uh, the case officer quite clearly covered all, all the aspects in the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr Bishop. Um, 
as I mentioned, Proxy Board Council is not present and I don't believe she's made any further submission. No. Um, so could I have confirmation, please, that all members other than uh, Councillor Millmore that are present um, are in a position to vote. They've uh, heard the um, presentation and um, the debate on this application. Nobody's saying they can't. Um, so my understanding is there's 12 to vote. Um, that's correct. I concur, Chair. Okay, thank you. Right, I'll remind members then um, that they can uh, vote. Uh, we've got a proposal for um, approval of this uh, application uh, proposed by Councillor James, seconded by Councillor Johnson. Um, so if I could ask a uh, technical officer to uh, actually launch the, uh, the vote, please. So you can vote for, against or abstain for the approval of this application. You've got 30 seconds to actually submit your vote. All votes are in, Chair, and those have been unanimously approved. Okay, thank you. Um, so that application is improved as per the officer recommendation. Uh, we now swiftly move on to item uh, eight on the agenda. Could I um, ask that uh, Councillor Wilding is back with us? I think he is. Um, right. Item eight on the agenda. Um, this is an application uh, for number uh, 203159, number 41, Pool Cottages, Lower Lyde, Hereford. Uh, this is pr proposed erection of a single story extension to form an annex accommodation. Um, Councillor Crockett is the ward councillor for this application. Um, unfortunately, Councillor Crockett is in another meeting, couldn't attend, but um, again, has um, uh, provided a written statement. And uh, Emily Brooks is the uh, planning officer that is uh, dealing with this application and uh, she will make her presentation now. Uh, in your own time, please, uh, Ms. Brooks, thank you. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning, members. I will just wait for the presentation to uh, go to full screen. Sorry, for some reason, it's not permitting me to do that. So if you could carry on for the moment and I'll try and okay. sort it out. Thank you. No problem. <clears throat> The scheme here is assessed against the adopted Herefordshire Development Plan, which is made up of the Herefordshire Core Strategy. The parish of Pipe and Lyde are not currently preparing a neighbourhood development plan. May I firstly draw your attention to the update sheet, which states that the applicant has completed the climate uh, checklist and has provided further detail on the sustainability measures that uh, are to be put in place in this development. Um, this namely discusses the inclusion of the solar panels, which is outlined at paragraph 6.11 of the officer report, and uh, then goes on to talk about uh, installation of electric vehicle charging points and the intention to include an air source heat pump, although this is uh, intended to be installed under permitted development. The site, number 41 Pool Cottages, is a two-storey detached dwelling constructed of stone and brick and is sited within a large plot and accessed via a private track. The property is located in the parish of Pipe and Lyde and as standard, the site is identified here by the Red Star. Next slide, please. This application is made in full and seeks planning permission for a single storey extension to the side and rear of the property, which is to be used as an annex for an elderly relative. The application is recommended to be approved. An application of this nature would typically be dealt through delegated matters. However, due to the applicant being a staff member, it is intended at, it needed to attend committee. The image at the top of the slide um, the application can be seen edged in red. Uh, the proposed extension is to be erected in the southeastern corner of the property. 
Uh, this image also helps to demonstrate the relationship between the application site and the surrounding properties. So it is, it is clear that there is substantial distancing between these properties. So Lai Barn is the property to the east, that's located 32 metres away. Al Barn is the property to the north, and that is located 70 metres away. And Pool Barn is the property to the northwest, and that is located 62 metres away. The images to the bottom of the screen show the siting where the proposal is to be sited and also shows the current green infrastructure that is on site. Next slide, please. The drawing to the left shows the existing floor plan and the drawing to the right shows the proposed floor plan. Here you can see the proposed uses of the extension, which includes a kitchen, bedroom, office, bathroom and living spaces. You can also see the solar panels on the roof. The details of the proposal are outlined at paragraph 1.4 of the officer's report um, and the use of an annex will be confirmed by condition um, and the case law that relates to the use of an annex um, is also outlined in the officer's report. Next slide please. This slide shows the existing and proposed elevations. In assessing the application, it is clear that the proposal accords with the policies of the Herefordshire Call Strategy, namely policies SD1 and LD1. The proposal has incorporated local architectural detailing and materials and respects the scale, height and proportions of the host dwelling and the surrounding development. In addressing the comments that have been raised by the Parish Council, which states that the proposal is a large extension and that they hoped that it would keep it within character of the existing building, I believe that the features such as the proportionate building, uh, windows, the roof pitch, the materials, these will reflect and maintain the character of the host dwelling. In addition, it is considered that the scale of the proposal is appropriate and respectful of the host dwelling and the wider area. The proposal is subservient to the host dwelling through its single storey nature and being set back from the principal elevation by 3.5 metres and this therefore accords with SD1 of the core strategy. Moreover, it is considered that the application accords to SD1 and LD1 of the core strategy in that the, the proposal is reflective of the landscape and townscape. The property um, in the surrounding area are of a large scale and are sited within large plots and these all host traditional materials which um, reflect those that are to be used in this application. The proposed brick has also been carefully selected and has been presented to myself and is considered to be acceptable. And this uh, brick selection is up on the website, so it can be seen there too. It's also worth noting here that the applicants have gone through our pre-application service and they have responded positively to the comments that were made by our officers, as such as the alteration in the roof pitch and the positioning of the um, extension. It is overall considered that the design by virtue of scale, architectural detailing and material selection is satisfactory in accords to the development plan policies. Next slide, please. With regards to the impact the proposal would have on the amenity of neighbouring properties, as discussed above, the surrounding uh, properties, they are located a substantial distance away and there is much vegetation that provides visual barriers. The applicant has also highlighted to myself um, and shown me on, on my site visit the uh, further green infrastructure that they have already put in place. And these images here show a visual indication um, of, the vis of the visual barriers. Um, and also the um, image on the left shows a picture taken from the balcony of Pool Barn, uh, which is 62 meters uh, to the northwest, um, which shows that you won't be able to see the extension from their property. Um, and it also is noted that no representations have been received. Um, there are no ecological features that would be impacted by the proposal. And given the nature of the development being a full householder, it is considered to be de minimis and therefore HRA is not triggered. So to summarize, the proposal has been been designed to complement the character of the host dwelling and wide area by virtue of scale, architectural detailing and materials. It is not considered that proposal will cause harm to the amenity of the surrounding property by way of overlooking given the single story nature and su substantial distancing and visual barriers. And finally, it is not considered that the proposal will negatively impact the highway network. And therefore it is my recommendation um, that planning permission is to be granted subject to conditions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Brooks. Very good, uh, Sarah, presentation. Um, as I said, the, the uh, ward councillor uh, cannot be present. We've got no public speakers, but um, Councillor Crockett has uh, 
submitted a written statement, which I'll ask Mr. Brain to read to you now, please. Thank you. I have reviewed this application and wish to add the following comments. I note the concerns of the parish council regarding size and character of the proposed extension. I also note the comments from the planning officer in this regard. She states that the proposal has been designed to preserve the character of the host dwelling and surrounding area. The visual impact of the proposal is limited due to the scale of the proposal, complying with core strategy SD1, LD1. I applaud the applicant for including sustainable features, as this also demonstrates a positive response to SD1 of the core strategy, and this council's commitment to the climate emergency by reducing personal carbon footprint. And finally, I agree with the conditions that are to be applied, should the committee be minded to approve this application, to which I offer my full support. That concludes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, we now move to uh, the debate proper then. Uh, so I'm looking for the first speaker, please. Councillor Milne. Um, just for clarification, the uh, reference, uh, as we have heard from the case officer, to this being a single host dwelling is incorrect because this is a pair of cottages historically and architecturally, which just happened to be at the moment in single occupancy. So should we not be judging the scale of this extension against the single cottage to which it is in fact attached rather than two cottages together? Question for you, uh, if I may ask for the case officer to comment on that. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh... Ms Brooks, if you'd like to respond, please. The current use of the dwelling, yes, it previously was two separate dwellings. However, it is currently used as a single dwelling. And in respect to um, the overall overall host dwelling, it is still considered that the scale of the development is appropriate. Okay, thank you for that, Ms Brooks. Uh, have you any further comment, uh, Councillor Mill? Um, I, thank you. I, I, I have no further comment, just um, accept the uh, case officer's opinion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm looking for another speaker, please. Any volunteers? Councillor Paul Andrews. Thank you, Chair. Just to say, um, obviously, good officer reports. I think we should just go to the vote, to be honest, and I would propose that we go by officer with the officer approval. Oh, approval. Okay, thank you. That's a proposal for approval, uh, seconded by Councillor Selden. Um, I have two further speakers, Councillor James and then Councillor Polly Andrews. Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. I, I was going to propose what Councillor Andrews has just proposed. I mean, bearing in mind the, I mean, Councillor Mills' uh, observation about it being two cottages. Well, we have many properties throughout the county which were more than one property originally, but they are of a size that are not appropriate to to modern living and modern families. So, you know, I I, I think um, I support the uh, application. Thank you, Councillor James. Councillor Polly Andrews, please. Thank, thank you, Chairman. I would simply say we should support every every evidence that this gentleman is trying to support elderly residents on site, on his own site, which should be encouraged, I think. Um, and I'm happy to support this recommendation. Okay, thank you, Councillor Andrews. Uh, we've got no further speakers registered. Um, so if I'd like, I'd like to go across to uh, Mr. Bishop, please, to make any comments. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just, to, just to confirm as a case officer that you're looking at one dwelling on the site, not two. Um, and if they did want to revert back to two, they would have to make a, actually a planning application to you um, to, to do that. But this, is, this property is now one dwelling and, and it's an extension to that one dwelling to create this, this annex. Uh, the, the case officers clearly identified all the reports. The um, case officers also uh, been able to seek uh, amendments to the to the proposal during the pre-application stage, showing the benefit of pre-application on on the proposal, which is good as well. Um, and uh, I've got nothing further to add, Chairman. Okay, 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Uh, that's very helpful. Um, as I said previously, the uh, ward councillor, councillor Crockett's not present, um, and I don't believe she's um, submitted any further uh, representation, no. So we're in a position to go to the vote. So I'd like to remind members of the committee that they can only vote on this application uh, if you've been present for the whole of the uh, presentation and uh, discussion thereon. Um, does anybody need to advise me that they cannot vote? If not, then can I ask Democratic Services um, whether the electronic system is ready and to confirm the number of eligible voting committee members for this poll? I believe it's 14. Uh, yes, Chair, I can confirm 14. And okay, the vote you. is ready and I will launch now. Okay, thank you. So we've got a proposal for approval of this application as per the officer recommendation. So if you could cast your votes for, against, or abstain and submit, please. Okay, Chair, all votes are in. 13 for those recommendations, one abstention. Okay, uh, that application is uh, carried. Uh, 13 votes for and one abstention. Um, now, we did have programmed in a, another adjournment, but I think that um, unless any members um, consider otherwise, I'd like to go straight uh, through to the next application. Okay, nobody's indicating they need a break, so... Um, uh, if we can move forward then to um, item nine on the agenda, uh, number 202406, which is a proposed extension and alteration at uh, 28 Mount Crescent, Hereford. Um, we have received one written submission from uh, Hereford City Council and there's no other speakers for this application. Um, the ward councillor for this application is uh, Councillor uh, Ange Tyler. Uh, unfortunately, she is at another meeting and not able to make it, but um, she has submitted a written statement. Um, the officer presenting this application to us is um, Mr. Wager, who is uh, quietly sat there waiting. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'll ask Mr. Wager to um, make the presentation, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, members. This presentation relates to number 28 Mount Crescent, which is a semi-detached dwelling located in the Tupsley area of Hereford. The dwelling is demarked with a star on the map shown. This full householder application is for a two-story extension to the rear and side um, of the dwelling. It also includes a single story element to the rear. The development plan for the area consists of the Herefordshire local plan core strategy, and there is no neighbourhood development plan at present. This application is brought before members as it is a uh, staff application. Next slide, please. This slide shows the host dwelling at the application site edged in red in the top left corner of the slide. The image below shows the street scene with the host dwelling at number 28 being in the centre, number 30 adjoins to the left, and number 26 uh, is attached to the right. As can be seen, the dwelling has a hipped roof, rough cast uh, render finish to the walls with an attached garage to the side. It should be noted that the dwellings are um, on this side of the street form part of the inner radius of the crescent. And so the separation distances between the dwellings taper from front to rear. Next slide, please. This slide shows the existing ground floor plan to the left and the proposed floor plan to the right with the um, extent of the extension shown in red on the right hand side. The rear extension would project 3.5 meters from the host dwelling uh, and the side extension would project by 1.5 meters. The proposal would provide an enlarged, for an enlarged kitchen slash dining room, the provision of a family room within the former kitchen space and a WC on the ground floor. Next slide, please. This slide shows the existing first floor plan to the left and the proposed first floor plan to the right for reference. As may be seen, the only part of the rear extension uh, um, is a two-story, only part of the rear extension is two-story in nature. 
Uh, the proposal at the first floor level includes bathroom and a fourth bedroom with an ensuite. Next slide, please. This slide shows the existing elevation plans at the top and the proposed elevation plans below. The proposed two-story extension has a height to the eaves of five meters and the rear two-story projection includes an asymmetric dual pitched roof. The proposed materials would be to match the host dwelling. Officers consider the proposal to be of a poor design due to the manner in which the side extension projects from the existing hipped roof. This issue is typified by the unprepossessing dual pitched asymmetric roof to the rear. The host dwelling is noted to be well proportioned of a considered design aesthetic and offers a balanced built form in the street scene. It follows that the proposal is considered to represent poor design and so is in conflict with paragraph 130 of the framework, as well as the policies of the core strategy. Next slide, please. The top left photo shows the rear elevation of the host dwelling, number 28. The top right photo shows the rear elevation of the adjoining dwelling, number 30, which lies to the east of the application site. The bottom left photo shows the view from the kitchen window of the adjoining dwelling, number 30. The bottom right photo shows the window in its context in the room. This is the only window into the kitchen space, which also includes a modest table for dining. The proposed side extension would, would end approximately 3.8 meters from the kitchen window of the adjoining dwelling, number 30. Given the scale of the extension with an eaves height of five meters, with the proposal projecting to both the rear and to the side of the dwelling, and it being sited to the west of the adjoining dwelling, the proposal is considered to impact on the natural light reaching this window and the habitable ground floor space of the neighboring dwelling. Officers conclude that the proposed uh, proposal would detrimentally impact the immunity of the neighboring property by virtue of blocking natural light and having an overshadowing and overbearing effect. It follows that the proposal is considered to be contrary, uh, to be in conflict with the provisions of the development plan due to its poor design and detrimental impact on the immunities of, enjoin of the adjoining dwelling, thus being in conflict with core strategy policies SD1, LD1 and SS6, as well as the provisions of the National Planning Policy Framework and the National Design Guide. To conclude, officers recommend the application is refused for the two refusal reasons set out in the officers' report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Wager. Um, very clear report. Thank you. Um, we've um, no virtual uh, public speakers, but we have a written submission from Hereford City Council. Um, and I'll ask uh, Mr. Brain to read that out uh, in the first instance, please. The City Council objects to this application on the same grounds as the neighbours. The extension should be modified to reduce impact and so that it does not extend beyond the rear elevation. The neighbours have put forward a reasonable and well-argued objection and the City Council would ask that their views are supported by the Planning Committee and a less intrusive design in keeping with the other properties in the area that have extended is required. And that concludes. Okay, uh, thank you Mr Brown. Um, now, as previously stated, uh, the ward member, uh, Councillor Tyler, uh, cannot be present, but again has uh, submitted a written statement, which Mr Brain will read to you, please. In principle, I have no objection to extending the dwelling known as 28 Mount Crescent to provide additional accommodation. However, I concur with the officer's recommendations. Mount Crescent is characterised within the street scene of semi-detached properties, having hipped roof lines set within a circular radius, enjoying off-street parking and reasonably sized front gardens. Some properties have been extended successfully, complementing the host dwelling without detriment to the street scene or neighbouring properties. The proposed design, with its ungainly roof line and its close proximity to the neighbouring property number 30, would have a detrimental impact upon their amenity, as well as affect the characteristics of the existing dwelling. Such design concept should be discouraged for this type of dwelling in order that a precedent is not set for future development within this area. And that concludes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. We now uh, move to the uh, debate proper. Um, looking for the first speaker, please. Nobody volunteering yet. No, all lost your tones. Thanks to Polly Andrews. Thank you, Chairman. Um, as a member of the Hereford City Council Planning Committee, 
uh, as you hear, we objected to this application. It's out of keeping with the size and uh, design of the existing dwelling. So I'm happy to move the recommendation for approval. Refusal. Refusal. Refusal, Refusal. sorry. <laughs> Refusal. Okay. Um, have I a seconder for that uh, proposal to refuse? Councillor Johnson had his hand up first, and Councillor mm. Johnson is registered next to speak. Thank you. No, I was only going to, uh, to make the same recommendation, Chairman. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Fagan. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say actually that I think that the impact on the, the neighbouring property is too great and, and that I concur with the officer's report and uh, what the City Council have said. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Milne. Um, without uh, tediously repeat, repeating what uh, Councillor Fagan has said, yeah, I concur with the officer's report as well. Uh, it's one of these cases where you, you, you'd hope the applicant would do a, a pre-app, and um, it, it's just such a good um, example of how, with a little bit of uh, pre-app advice, you can get a, a, a design there, which is likely to, much more likely to be acceptable. Thank you, anyway. So it's a, okay. Bye bye. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Uh Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I'm basically agreeing with everybody else. Um, it's too big, it affects the neighbours, and I don't see any um, uh, things to suggest there's going to be a solar panel and stuff like that put on. So I just uh, urge the applicant to go for a pre-app and to include um, some you know, climate emergency and ecological uh, things within their, their new app. And I'm sure it will be okay then. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wilding. Um, I've no further speakers registered. Um, Mr. Bishop, if you'd like to say a few words. Yes, Chairman, just, just to say that the uh, case officer has attempted um, to uh, negotiate a more acceptable scheme. Um, obviously, this is the, 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 the stage we've got to. Um, which is still not uh, which is still not acceptable for officers. Uh, we feel is contrary to policy, uh, and obviously a re, um, members uh, uh, appear to be con concurring with that view, uh, which is which is uh, appreciated. And obviously it, it, a refusal will con will concentrate one's mind towards an acceptable design, possibly. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bishop. Uh, right. Um, we got a proposal on the table for refusal of this application uh, proposed by uh, Councillor Polly Andrews and seconded by Councillor Johnson. Um, can you all please advise me that um, you're in a position to, um, to vote that uh, none of you lost your um, sound and uh, failed to hear any of the uh, presentation or debate? Nobody is uh, indicating as such. Um, can I ask um, Democrat, Democratic officers, please, to uh, confirm that we have 14 members can vote on this application? Yes, I can confirm 14 members, Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you could launch the, um, the vote, please. And this is for refusal of this application against or abstain if you could um, all vote now you have 30 seconds to vote please okay chair all votes are in 13 in favor for those recommendations and one abstention okay thank you so um, that is carried that this application is refused uh, so it just leaves me to um, Thank you all very much for your attendance at uh, this morning's meeting. Um, it's quarter to 12, a lot, lot earlier finish than uh, the last committee that we, uh, that we ran. It was rather a heavy one, but um, thank all members for their input. Um, our next meeting is uh, Wednesday, the 16th of December, so two weeks time. Uh, can I have confirmation, please, that the live stream has been stopped.